One of the things about the misperception of Native American people, especially Native people in the United States, is that they are largely hunter-gatherers. And that's not really the case. There was a lot of hunting, there was a lot of gathering, but most Native people in the United States were um, agriculturalists. And so it's a happy accident, because this was a series of paintings of Georgia agriculture, that it would show the primacy of agriculture. The image itself has um, hunting and fishing, but at the center is corn. Planting would have been the responsibility of the women. Um, men were hunting, women were planting. One important factor is to show that shows how central women were to agriculture was that all of the stories about how agriculture come to tribal peoples are stories about female deities. Um, corn mother. Corn mother is the, um, is the central figure that brings corn to the people, and it is the women who are in charge of perpetuating that. Even, even though the women are topless, they're not hypersexualized. It's more like they simply don't know they're naked. Um, Cherokee women would not have worn a very short little breech clout and no top. They would have worn um, deerskin dresses, probably summer shifts. They may have been topless, but they would have worn layered necklaces uh, to cover their breasts. The men's clothing would have been a breech clout. It would have been longer. That was for every day. That was around the village wear. That poor hunter off in the corner would have been so chewed up by the brush if he had gone out there with only his breech clout instead of his you know, leggings, which would have gone from um, ankle to mid-thigh, deerskin shirt to protect his, his uh, torso. The second image um, is a perfect representation of the American myth of what happens to Native people. In the foreground you see all of the whites who are now taking over this agricultural role. They're the ones planting, they're the ones harvesting, and the Indians have now faded into the background um, and quite literally are receding and growing smaller. Uh, there's one Native person to the side, uh, in between, standing behind, um, eyes downcast, suggesting subservience. It seems to be, to me, a reference to um, the historical encounter between uh, James Oglethorpe, since there's water in the background, um, it suggests to me Savannah River, and the founding of Savannah, um, and the figure on the left could be representing Toma Chichi, who was the leader of the Yamacra, who was the liaison between his people and um, Oglethorpe. It does reinforce that vanishing Indian stereotype, the idea that the Indians simply disappeared because they could not adapt to um, this modern world. It flies in the face of what actually happened in Georgia's history. In Georgia's history, by the 1830s, when the Native people were removed, they were thriving farmers. At that point, the Cherokee had adopted um, a constitution that was based on the U.S. Um, model. It had a bicameral legislation. They had a Supreme Court. Um, they were very civilized according to the program that had been set out by the U.S. That was the U.S.'s first policy toward Indians. Before removal, they decided that they could be civilized and they would live beside us as neighbors. The native people who were removed from here weren't removed from the woods. They didn't live in teepees. They lived in houses. They lived in plantations. They had slaves. They had churches and schools and farms. And that's what they left behind. And so that part of the story is very much missing from these two images that Beattie has produced.